Hi everyone, my name is Steven from Big Fish Audio, and you are currently watching the contact overview video for Funk Soul Horns 2. Funk Soul Horns 2 is part of our KLI series, which stands for Contact Loop Interface. We've created a custom interface with custom controls that you will find on a lot of our products, uh, but we wanted to give you a special look into Funk Soul Horns 2 to see what we did with it and how you can uh, fully utilize the features and the functions of uh, this product. If you're watching this and you like the sound, uh, the sounds that you're about to hear, um, that you're hearing, um, but you don't have contact, well, don't fear. We have Apple Loops, Wave, and Rex versions of the same product. Um, so if you're not familiar with contact or, or um, you don't have it, you have that option. But in this overview, we're just gonna look through some of the different types of patches and what you can do with them uh, using contact. A little bit more about this library. It's basically a library of classic funk and soul styles uh, with uh, alto, tenor, and berry saxes, trumpets, trombones, as well as alto and soprano flutes uh, in some of the kits where um, the styles make sense to have those flutes with them. Uh, there's nearly four gigs, 2,700 samples, over 2,700 samples included. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this product. Uh, first, let's look at, at uh, the folders that, that you get when you uh, get the KLI version of Funksil Horns 2. You'll have a samples folder and the contact five folder, which has all the patches. You don't really need to worry about the samples folder. Um, if you want, they are just AIF files in here. If you wanted to drag and drop one into a track and just wanted to do it that way, you could as well. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and go to the contact five folder here. Again, as you can see, this product is for contact five, I believe 5.3 um, or higher. So um, you will need the full version of contact to use this. In the kit combos, you have, as you can see here, 12 different construction kits. And uh, based on different styles, you can they're just in the name with the key, as well as the tempo listed. You can click on here and see that inside each one of these folders, you're going to have two different kit combos. One is called premixed and one isn't premixed. The premixed, as you're about to see, is basically all the parts of each loop um, played and mixed or pre-mixed, pre panned and everything. Um, they are dry so that if you want to um, add your own reverb to it, you can do that. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the pre-mixed version of this kit combo. You can see here on the keyboard, on all the white notes, uh, you have uh, all the loops laid out. And then you have a different fader for each different loop if you want to adjust the key or um, the pitch of it, panning. In total, in this particular kit, there's 18 different loops. So let's look at some of the, the contact features that we have on here. First, you have a tune knob. You can go in and individually tune up or down any one of these to a different key. So for example, um, and with contact five, you have uh, just really, really high quality time stretching and pitch stretching on, on loops. Um, it really preserves the timbre and the quality as you go up and down, where a lot of different pitch uh, stretching methods, time stretching methods, you really lose qu the quality and the timbre of the instruments quickly. And in this case, you're about to see, we can really stretch these things quite far. So I can go ahead and drop this, say, just something fairly uh, modest and just go a whole step down. And let's push it even farther here, about half an, half an octave here. And half an octave, octave, octave up. And really the difference that you're getting with this is, is the, the, the buzz, the, the, the blowing noise, all the things that are the non-tonal part of these loops, they don't get moved up and down as you change the pitch. It only takes the tonal part and changes that. That's what preserves the character of these instruments as you move them up and down. So you really can you know, put these in, in a lot more musical context when you have the ability to change the key of this so drastically. In addition, uh, you can see we're at 115 BPM. That was the original tempo of this. Let's drop this down to not 5 BPM. Uh, let's go down to about 90. Let's 
try 70. Now let's speed it up. So you can see I stretched that like 80 BPM range there. You can really go really slow, really fast, you know, in, in relation to the original tempo and key. So again, this is, uh, th these are the pre-mixed ones. So again, you don't have access in, in this particular one to all the different instruments being played in here. Um, all the patches also include an instrument effects page. If you want to go ahead and add some effects to the what you're playing there. You can do that. So you have all these included effects right here on the interface. Let's go ahead and now look at the other kit combo that was not pre-mixed. And we'll just load that up here. And in this case now, all of our faders are for the individual instruments and not by loop by loop. You have the same, this is the, from the same kit, so you have the exact same number of loops available to you. But now, I can go in here and start panning these things how I want. And again, that, that setting will be the same across all the different loops now. And you still have the tune page. And again, you also have the instrument effects page. So these are useful if you want to get a little bit more in depth into the mix. Um, if, if you wanted to do it uh, a different panning arrangement of uh, your horn section, add effects individually, you could do that then uh, with, with this particular uh, kit combo. Let's go back to our folder here. And uh, lastly, in the kit combos, we have the solos, licks, uh, solo licks and phrases. And you'll have different instrument sets of various phrases that go along with this particular kit. They'll match, you know, with the style and with the, the tempo and the key and everything. So we'll load up one of those here real quick. And you just have the one fader on this one. Um, but here's the trumpet licks. I'm gonna bring this back down to the original tempo here. And again, these will be also tempo synced uh, to your host. Um, and you have all the same features as the previous um, patches. Now we're gonna look at something a little bit different and really where you can dive into an individual loop and really create something brand new if you wanted to out of the loop and we're going to go now to the slice loop folder and we'll still stay with uh, this De Detroit Soul kit here and open up one individual loop okay so here you can see every note of this loop has been given its own slice and what that allows you to do is it allows you to access this loop at any point within the, um, the loop. You don't have to start from one spot at the, or the beginning like you would normally would. And you can play each individual slice uh, as one shots if you like as well. So if you wanted to completely rearrange the loop, um, you could do that. This is a fairly basic loop here. It doesn't really have a lot of changes or anything like that. But on the keyboard down here, you can see the, uh, the red key here. That's simply gonna play the loop forward. If you wanted to, you could also hit D0 and play backwards. Um, but in this case, uh, we're going to jump up an octave, and now I have the access to the, all the different notes. So as I told you, I could start this loop from any point. Or go to one-shot mode. And play it as its own instrument. Um, at the top here, you have access to uh, pitch, pan, attack, decay, cutoff, and resonance. And this can be applied to any of the, the different slices. So if I wanted to change the melody of this a little bit, I'd select pitch. Let's change the pitch of this note here. And I can go up all the way an octave and all the way down an octave uh, with the pitch. So this can be done 
um, again, with any of these different parameters. And you can also, if you wanted to, you could draw in, like on a cutoff, you could draw in using some, some key commands, a uh, continuous line, a uh, continuous curve uh, across the loops. Um, a couple of the other features on here uh, is the edit window. Again, if, if you wanted to apply something across an entire loop, go ahead and just pan that a little bit left and a little bit right. And then here at the edit window, you can repeat a certain number of steps. So if I could just repeat two steps across the entire loop and it'll just replace um, what I did in the first two slices across all the slices. Uh, BPM, you can go half time or double time. And this is useful if you're playing with a track that say um, was, was double the speed of this. You're in a, in a track that's at 230, for example. Go ahead and... All right, I'm going to zero these out here. But say you wanted this loop to still sound like it did originally. Now, you didn't want it double speed. Well, I can just click the half time. And it'll go back to where it originally was. Um, in this case, because I went double the speed, I'm at 230 BPM in my track. So... This gives you the ability to use this loop in a, and again, a much wider range of, of tempos, um, being able to double or half time the speed. If you're in a, a tempo, like I said, in your host, that's way off from what the original loop uh, tempo was. You can also use a, an input queue, it allows you to delay uh, at what point your next note that you played, when it's going to happen, when it's going to actually trigger. And you can do a number of presets, up to 16 different presets. If you had different edits across the same loop, you had one with, say, uh, the filter going, uh, the, the low-pass filter, um, for a different section of the song, you could do that um, using the presets. And these are all MIDI CC assignable as well. And finally, I'm just going to drag uh, Logic over here real quick so you can see one other feature which is this little icon right here, which you can use to drag your MIDI file from your loop onto your track. And then at that point, you can edit the MIDI. So this will be all the different notes. And if you wanted to change the arrangement, if you wanted to quantize, uh, you could. it's really useful to use the MIDI track to do that. I'd like to thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. Again, this was Funk Soul Horns 2 of the KLI series. For more information, go to bigfishaudio.com.